In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the Reloom library on an existing project. Now, the approach changes depending on what that existing project looks like. So there are two types of existing projects. There's type one that doesn't use client first naming system, right? Then there's type two, which does use the client first naming system, but it's using FinSuite's style guide. So they're clonable starter project uh, to begin with. Now there are two different approaches. I'm gonna start with showing you how to add the Reloom library components to an existing project that doesn't use client first. And then I'll touch on how to add to an existing project that uses FinSuite style guide. So let's jump in and get started. So here's an example of an existing project that doesn't use client first that we're going to add Reloom library components to. Now, this project was a project we worked on over a year ago before Client First was a thing, before Reloom Library was launched. And so it's gonna be a good example of using uh, Reloom Library on an existing project. Now, just like to caveat that there is no smooth way of integrating Reloom Library components into an existing project that doesn't use Client First, and that sometimes it's just best to rebuild the site using the Reloom Library or begin using the components on new pages if the website is a larger website and you don't have time to rebuild it. And that's because a project can be built in many different ways, uh, whether that is the approach to your, the way you use classes or the approach to the design itself and the spacing values, etc. The Reloom library is uh, one way of building a website. It uses best practices and it uses a very common way of building, however, it sometimes does clash with other ways of building and so it's not always the smoothest integration. So I'm just gonna caveat that before we can begin. Nonetheless, I'm gonna show you the best way to implement uh, Reloom Library into an existing website and the very first step that you'll want to take is to create a style guide page. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I'm gonna save this as a draft. And then the next step is I've created this style guide page for the purpose of copying and pasting the style guide found in the uh, Reloom starter project clonable. And I'm gonna paste that into here. So I'm gonna go to the Reloom clonable. And I'm gonna click clone style guide. I'm gonna clone it in Webflow. I'm gonna clone site. Now I'm going to go to the style guide page and I'm going to copy this and I'm going to then paste this into the project. Great, now there are two ways that you can copy the style guide. One way is to clone the project and copy it the way I've just shown you. The other way is to go to the UI elements and copy the style guide component and paste it in. So that might be a faster way for you um, if you don't have the clonable um, handy. So you'll see that there's a little bit of, uh, there's a notification and Webflow has renamed three classes in order to avoid conflict. So what does this mean? Well, essentially when Webflow uh, determines that there is a, a class um, inside of a project that shares the same name but different styling, then Webflow chooses to duplicate that class. So this is very normal and it does happen quite a bit when using the Reloom library because the Reloom library has existing classes with existing styling. So what you'll need to do now is just make sure that you address those uh, class duplications in the right way. And so what you wanna do is you wanna clean up some of the classes and convert them to the client first classes. So the first step is to uh, get or identify all the classes that have been duplicated, if there are any. Now there's no easy way to do this, but I do have one way that I like to do it, and that is to go to the style manager and search two. And I'm searching two because when Webflow duplicates a class, what they do is they use the same class name but add a two at the end of it. So it's an easy way to determine which classes have been duplicated. So I'll scroll through and I'll find the classes that have two at the end of it. 
and here we already have determined one of them and that's the button class. So uh, I'll want to do that for every single class and address it. So I'm going to start off by addressing this button class. So I'm going to go and scroll down to the button class here. And I'm going to click through and as I can see, this class has been duplicated. If I were to backspace it to use button, it would say it already exists. So I'm going to just pull up the class that already exists. I'm going to remove this class and I'm going to type in button. And here I see the styling of the button class um, that belongs to this existing project. Now, I'm going to rename this button class button old and I'm going to style this button class uh, the same way, uh, I'm going to style the new button class the same as the old button class. So I'm going to go to button, I'm going to call this button and then I'm going to just style this in the same way. Cool. Then I'm going to delete this button class and I'm going to start using the, the original button class. Now, this project doesn't have any secondary buttons, it doesn't have any tertiary buttons so uh, that are conflicting. So for now, I'm just going to leave this as is. What I'll do next is I would continue to go through and search through the, the classes that have been duplicated uh, and ensure that uh, the duplication is uh, not an issue. But I'm not going to do this for this tutorial because um, I want to jump ahead to the next thing. So the next thing is that uh, you might want to reduce any margin spacing associated with text. So Webflow um, by default adds margin spacing to heading classes and to text classes. However, in client first, we don't use margin spacings like that. So what we want to do is we want to just remove the margin spacing um, for all heading classes. Okay, another thing that you'll notice is that there, um, some of the heading classes and some of the text classes um, are a little different to the classes that already exist or the, the heading and typography that already exists inside the project. So that's because the um, style guide comes with pre-built styling and so you'll just need to adapt the heading classes to match the website's uh, typography. So you might want to edit that too. Once that's all done, I can now jump back into the home page uh, and begin to start adopting the client first best practices. And the first thing I want to do is I want to go to UI elements and I want to add in the client first page structure. So I'm going to do that by copying that, going back to the project, pasting that in. Now this is how you should set up every page when using client first. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the nav bar above the main wrapper and then I'm going to drag in the section um, into the main wrapper. So all the sections into the main wrapper and then I'm going to drag the footer below the main wrapper. So the page structure is set. It is looking like client first should be, should look, right? Now I'm going to start adding components in. I'm just going to add one component as the example and then this tutorial is done. So basically I'm going to go over to the feature sections and I'm going to copy and paste layout one. And I'm going to add it to the bottom of the page right here. And there we are. I can start to uh, add components to it. Yes, there is going to be some duplication. That's totally normal. If whenever there is a duplication with buttons, particularly, you will just want to rename that button. Uh, we are working towards or we're working on improving that experience because it's not ideal. But at the moment, that is the, the nature of building on an existing website. Um, but hopefully, uh, you are still saving time. I can assure you, you are by having, you know, most or 80% of the component already built. So yeah, that is how you add Reloom Library to an existing project. Now, if you have any further questions, do ask us on Slack, join our Slack channel or reach out to support at reloom.io. Now, let's move on to adding Reloom Library to a project that uses FinSuite's client first style guide.
So here we have an existing project that uses the FinSuite Client First Style Guide. Now this is a template that FinSuite has released as a clonable, so I'm gonna be using this as the example, but it does use uh, the, the FinSuite Client First Style Guide. And so I'm gonna show you how to add the components to this uh, in the smoothest way possible. So what you want to do is you want to go over to the Relum library and you want to go to the style guide dropdown and you want to click the FinSuite style guide. And so what this is doing is essentially this is adapting our components to FinSuite's uh, styling uh, classes. So the difference between Relum style guide and FinSuite style guide isn't the class naming but it is some of the spacing values we use. So we've adapted the Relum style guide to what we believe works from a design perspective in terms of spacing. And it's slightly different. It does have some differences to FinSuite. So that is basically the main difference. We do recommend you use the Relum style guide, but if you already have an existing project that's using uh, FinSuite's style guide, then this should work perfectly. So all I wanna do is click that, and then we can just begin to browse through components and add them in. So I'm just gonna copy and paste um, a few components as uh, the example here. So um, I'm going to open the main wrapper and I'm just gonna press paste, right? And it will likely re uh, duplicate a few classes, but that's okay. What you can do is just backspace wherever you see there's a two at the end of it and use the original class. Um, and so for the button classes here, just using the button class, and then for the button secondary, just using the button secondary, right? And now we have um, a component that is fully integrated into this, this project, and we can begin to add more components that way. So that's essentially how you start to use the Raven library inside of an existing project that uses FinSuite's style guide. Pretty straightforward, pretty easy to do, um, so yeah, if you have any questions, again, reach out to the Slack channel or reach out to us at support at reloom.io. Thanks for watching this video. If you found it useful and you would like to continue to improve your design and development workflow on Webflow, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. Now, if you would like to see more videos like this, you can visit the Reloom University on our website. And if you would like to join a community of designers and developers using Webflow, you can join our Slack channel, it's free, and you can find it on our website in the footer and also on our socials. Thanks for watching this video and enjoy building.